This is what we're going to be upgrading. Kind of wiggle this out. I'm not OCD when it comes to cables. I did end up going crazy with the RGB. What is up guys? We are back. I know how long has it been? It's been about, I want to say what, nine months? Almost a year since I've made a video and updated, but we are officially back. Um, a lot has happened since the last video. I think where I left you guys off with the Evo was getting the wheels done. So the wheels are here. Wheels are on, tires are on. I still have it actually, but as you can see a change of scenery, I've moved house. It's been that long, but yes, I've moved house. Um, Evo's still here. I've done a few things to the car since um, I've last seen you guys. So I've done the timing belt on this. I took it for a track day. I might put a little clip in there. But um, yeah, progress has been made. Um, it's just sitting neatly in my new garage. If you guys remember before, we were hanging out under a carport, a make, makeshift kind of carport, but we have a proper garage now and I could not be happier. It's beautiful. I'll do a separate video later on updating all of the things that have happened in the last, what, nine months since um, I haven't made a video. But today I want to focus on something else, which is building a computer. Um, I'm currently in the process of updating my personal rig, but I just wanted to make a video kind of documenting that progress. So let's go inside and um, I'll show you that. Okay guys, so welcome to the inside of my living room. Um, this is where I'm gonna be building a computer, I guess there's no, I don't have any desk space in the actual office, so I'm gonna be doing it on my dining table. But this is the PC in all of its glory. Um, if you guys are kind of uh, tech savvy or know computers, this is a Corsair One Pro, um, a 2017 model. So the first iteration of the Corsair One they did in 2017. Now this hasn't been my computer for long. I've literally just got it. Um, prior to this, I was a freelancer. So portability was one of the things that was important to me. So I've previously been running for the past maybe 18 months, a Gigabyte Aero 15X laptop, gaming laptop. So that thing comes with an i7 uh, 8750H. Um, and a GTX 1070 and I upgraded the RAM and um, M.2 as well, but um, you know, I've I sort of got a new job So that's why I haven't been making videos as well Actually, I've started a new job sort of sort of slowed down on that freelancer life So I didn't really need portability anymore and um, I decided to go back to a desktop system So I've always been a fan of small form factor PCs, you know, I, I, I did start my life building big ATX systems, like big towers. But after that, I kind of got sick of that just because of how much room they took up. Even though the airflow was great, um, I was tired of all the room it took up. So from then on, I just, I was building only mini ITX systems. When this thing first came out in 2017, I saw it and you know, it was, it was beautiful design. I think it's only 12 liters in whole cubic capacity. So it's ultra small, but at the time it came out, I think it was in this spec it was about 2200 USD, which in Australian dollars at that time, I think it was almost 3000 Australian dollars. So um, just crazy money at that time for me, way out of my price range. But fast forward now to 2021 and I picked up this bad boy used for 990 AUD. So it saved quite a bit of money, but there was a reason for that. Um, the previous owner, said that it had stopped, not stopped working, but it, it was having issues crashing. So I was confident that I could fix it. Just doing Google searches and common issues with these things, I was confident I could fix it. So I picked it up and um, I wanted to, wanted to try to upgrade it to bring it to kind of 2021 specs. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay guys, well, welcome to the top of the Corsair One here. Um, as you can see, I think the previous owner also replaced this top fan, which is the only fan in the whole system. It's a 140 mil and it pulls hot air out from the top of the system like this. 
So in theory, it was supposed to draw cool air in from these sides here and then draw it out the top. But um, he's replaced that original Corsair fan it had with a Silverstone kind of white and blue fan. Um, I, see, I'm, I see why he did it because it has blue LEDs on the front, but it's a bit ugly. I'm not really a fan, so I'm going to be changing that out as well. But um, to open the Corsair one, there's a button on the back. Um, this one right here. So you press this and the top just pops off. Um, and then ideally there's supposed to be a little connector here on the original fan that you could pop off like that But this connector goes all the way down to the motherboard. So really you have to open both sides um, I'm just gonna leave this like that right now while I get a screwdriver and we will disconnect this fan and um, Keep going with that. So To open the side panels, there's just these two screws there and these two screws there. So those two hold in those two side panels respectively. So those two will allow you to open this side and these two will allow you to open that side. So here with the CPU side open lying down on the side, you can see where the motherboard is. Um, the, the custom radiator, um, the PCI Express riser cable for the graphics card, which is enclosed in the other side of the computer, the power supply here, the RAM. It's kind of standard, but um, it's not, it's, it's, cr it's all crammed in there nicely. It's not too bad, but yeah. So what I just wanted to do here, we'll, we'll visit this side later because I just wanted to come in here and disconnect the top fan so I could get that out of the way. Um, and really first I wanted to focus on the other side of the computer which houses the graphics card. So I'm going to close this back up and we'll open the other side. Okay, so this side closed back up. We'll open this side to get to the graphics card side of the computer. Two screws, same as before. And this is actually going to be a bit easier for me since the custom water cooling uh, kind of assembly has been removed. So this side panel just comes completely off like that. Usually there would be radiated here with the two hoses, but and it would be stuck there. But since it's gone, it's a bit easier. So I'll put this off to the side and we'll lay it down. And you can see the 2060 Super that's in there now that the previous owner had put in. Um, so... Looking online before this, um, there was just information about the Corsair 1 Pro just that's out there on the forums. Uh, I can see originally back in 2017, there was a lot of hesitation and kind of worry about people working on these systems themselves, either from a complexity point of view, but also because, because since this was a pre-built from Corsair, people were worried that, you know, fiddling with things themselves or modifying stuff, taking components out would void warranty, which for back then a $2,200 USD system. Yeah, I wouldn't want to do that either. But I think the warranties on this has far expired and since I'm the second owner as well, I'm not too worried about poking in here, prodding and, and changing parts myself. And it honestly it doesn't look too bad. Um, so let me turn this around. So the first thing I want to do is remove the graphics card. We will be replacing this with something else. Um, I'll show you in a bit later, but I just want to get this out first. Um, I've done this before actually, so I've done this off camera. It's not that hard. I'll show you guys how if you want to kind of tweak and tinker with your Corsair one as well or the 2017 because I think they did change its design um, in the later models. They kind of swapped around the two compartments, but in the 2017 model to take the graphics card out firstly, there's a one screw here holding in this bracket. You take this screw out, take that out. Um, also, don't forget to unplug the display cables. So there's one HDMI that goes to the front, one display port that goes to the back. There's actually two more display ports here, but because the 2060 Super doesn't support that many display outs, um, these weren't, these are just not used. So we'll tilt it back down. So with that screw out, this bracket freely moves like that. Next is these two screws or bolts that hold on the PCI Express riser cable. So we'll undo these two. 
take that out. Also, the nice thing about these screws and bolts, except this one, it seems like this style hex kind of screw slash bolt combo is the same size that's used amongst the majority of the systems. So you don't really have to worry about getting them mixed up because they seem to me to be all the same. So first thing, okay, so we've got that, we've got this bracket out of the way, we've got those two screws. You kind of want to slide it forward because the bracket kind of slide the bracket on the graphics card slides into these two little metal prongs here that holds it in place. So slide it out of there and then tilt it upwards and then we'll undo the power cable. Just be gentle with it and now the whole thing should be able to slide forward gently noting that it's still attached to the riser cable there. So we'll just unlock that and kind of wiggle this out. Done. So 2060 Super Galax. There it is. This is the one click OC version. So it's a nice card. It's a nice card, but not nice enough for what we're going to be running later. So I'll put this off to the side. And here you can kind of see the graphics card graphics card side of the case. So this riser cable, you can see how many folds and bends it has for them to kind of get it to fit in here. It's a bit crazy. Um, that goes away to the other side. Here is the M.2 slot. So from factory, this didn't ship with the M.2. I kind of put one in here to kind of test if it was working. And yes, it does work. I'll be replacing this as well with an NVMe. But that's how we get to that. Um, here as well is that so it shipped originally with one eight pin PCIe power cable, um, which was for the 1080 Ti. And there was also this little micro USB, which is attached to a USB 2 header on the motherboard. So I believe this originally was for plugging into the water block that was on here. And it was connected to the Corsair Link software. So you could control the fan speed, monitor the temperatures and everything. But I've kind of put this away, cable tied that away to the side. Um, but yeah, that, that's how you get to the graphics card side of things. Um, I'll be replacing this M.2 now and I will show you the new graphics card we have. All right guys, welcome back. And um, I say welcome back because it's, it has been about a week since I last filmed that last clip. So I think where I left you was we removed the graphics card, the 2060 Super from the, the case itself. And um, I sold that graphics card already and I was waiting for all this stuff to come in. So this is what we're going to be upgrading the Corsair 1 with. Um, as you can see, I'm pretty much doing everything short of replacing the motherboard and CPU. Um, for what I'm going to be using it for now, currently, the existing motherboard and the i7 7700K, um, I, th it, I think it will serve me well. It, it'll be a, a kind of mid-range system and it'll be enough for what I'm doing right now. Nothing crazy, a little bit of video editing, some gaming, but I'm not going crazy, crazy. Um, when that time comes, I'll probably change it out and then probably put a uh, latest gen, maybe 10th series, 11th series, Intel, and maybe AMD will go down that route. But today we're doing everything short of changing the motherboard. So here, obviously the big one is the 2080 Ti. Um, I was able to find a founder's edition card for an okay price um, in today's climate. So that's nice. I've got a 970 Evo Plus NVMe M.2 for my boot drive. Uh, an 870 Evo, just 2.5 inch SATA for um, regular programs, things like that. And I might throw in a, I don't have it here, but I might throw in a actual hard drive for just bulk storage, maybe a four gig, four terabyte, sorry, hard drive. Um, here we have a PCIe riser cable. So I'll go into why this is important a bit later on. Um, we've got a Noctua NFA14 3000 RPM fan. So this is going to be replacing the main fan and since it was the only fan in the system well besides these two now uh, I wanted to make, get a good one I don't know if it's going to be too loud but we'll see um, we've got some fan extender cables and uh, I, I needed some RGB I know this thing is kind of clean I might just set them to white if you can just do that or to blue to match the fronts but I wanted to kind of show off the graphics card through the side panel so we got some RGB lights and so obviously to run this this only has one single 8-pin PCIe power connector and obviously for the 2080 Ti you need two so I've got these to, to throw in there as well. 
But um, let's get started. All right, so just trying to figure out where I want to start first. I think I want to start in the GPU GPU side of things. Um, we will start off with replacing the M.2. So if you can see that's where it is, it's a bit tight in here, but it's not too bad. I'm gonna need a smaller screwdriver. Perfect, so this was the old one. It was just a regular M.2, I think, SATA drive, not an actual NVMe. But we're replacing it with this one, 970 EVO Plus. Um, a nice drive. Um, but yeah, we'll be using this as the main boot drive, so hopefully it speeds things up quite significantly. Okay. Here's the drive, kind of gently slide it back in there. One of the hardest things about working in the Corsair 1 is the lack of space, which everyone complains about, but you know, take your time and don't break anything and you can get it done. Now obviously this is going to be, this is on the back of the motherboard and the graphics card is going to be right here. So there's going to be a lot of heat in this section, but I'm hoping with that new fan kind of getting the airflow in there, it won't it won't heat up to the extent where it's going to affect the performance. But um, we will see. I will definitely keep my eye on that. But hopefully we'll be okay. So let's put the screw back in. Okay. All right. Look at that. M.2 done. Not that hard. Okay. So staying in this side of the case, next thing I kind of want to do is the power cables or the riser cable. So I think what I'm going to do is I'll flip it over, we'll unplug both of these from the motherboard side and then we'll feed the new ones, both of the new ones through to this side. So a couple of things here, the existing power cable is, it's a bit special because they're thin, they're, they're all custom kind of very thin cables to get them, you know, routed properly, which was a, a special thing I did for the Corsair one, I believe. And the reason, I'm changing the riser cable here is because now this is where I found the issue with where the previous owner said the computer just kept restarting. So after a couple of hours of research online, Corsair forums, etc., the original Corsair one, this riser cable, there some of them had faults with them. So I don't know if it's from shipping or just the quality of these where the shielding um, wasn't wasn't as great, but it created problems where this would would I don't know what would happen. It would short out, or it would interfere with itself, but it would cause this, the system to keep restarting. So where Corsair found it, found the solution was to under warranty they'll give people new ones of these, or under the BIOS you would limit the the speed of the PCIe uh, port the ports to not PCIe three, but you would limit it to Gen one or Gen two. So, and then the system would run stable. So I'm hoping when I replace it with this one, which is a much higher quality uh, riser cable, it will kind of solve that issue and I can run at Gen 3 speed and it'll be no issues, no restarting. But let's get this unplugged from the other side and let's get the power cable unplugged from the other side. Alright guys, so here on the motherboard side of things, you can see the SF600 power supply modular. So unplugging the two motherboard connectors up top. And this one here is the PCIe 8 pin that goes around to the other side. So we'll be unplugging this one and running our new cables. And then here obviously is the riser cable. So we'll unplug that and we'll try to feed it through to the other side. I think I'm going to have to take out this um, 2.5 inch SSD to kind of feed through that cable back to the other side, but yeah, we'll do that All 
All right, guys, another angle again just to show you. Um, so this is the 2.5 inch hard drive SSD bay. So usually this slides in here. It's a toolless design, it's quite nice. So you pull on that little tab there and this comes out after you unplug everything. Um, this cable, the USB 3.0 header, I just unplugged that for the time being because it is a really thick cable and it gets in the way. So usually this guy, usually that guy comes over and plugs down into there, but taking me out for now. Um, your SATA cable here, SATA power, take it out of the way. This 8 pin is what you're going to have to feed through. So we're trying to get this through here. Now the hard drive bay is kind of flexible, so I'm hoping I can just bend it out of the way and get this through. And get that through there, but yeah. That is basically where I'm at. And obviously the riser cable I've unplugged. So it's just out now and then you've just got to feed that through like that. Hopefully you can see a bit better now, but this is the 8 pin and we're trying to get it through there. And what I was saying was with the hard drive enclosure being flexible, as you can see there, how I can, I can bend that away with my finger. That's basically what I want to do and squeeze that connector back through. Okay, so little update guys, I've got the existing 8 pin connector cable out, I've got the riser cable out, so the heart, the um, graphics card section is looking quite clean. We do have left uh, this kind of, what is this, mini USB cable here with a SATA power. Um, so this was originally for, I believe, the water cooler in here. This would connect up and this would power it and it would give access for the motherboard information and it would link up to Corsair, Corsair Link so you can monitor the fan speeds and temperature etc. I'm actually going to leave this here because the, where is it, the Lighting Node Pro, this actually requires one of these hooked up to a USB 2.0 header on the motherboard which this is already is and it actually uses SATA power which I believe. So I'm going to keep these two here. Um, hopefully I can connect the Lighting Node Pro and tuck it away. I think I'm going to run the LEDs along the sides, bottom and this top side here. And then hopefully I can tuck away that little controller somewhere in here. But hopefully I have enough space. Next, what I want to do is I want to get those new power cables, route them in here first. And then get that new riser cable, route that through. And then we will put the new graphics card in. Okay, so these are the new um, power supply cables. Keeping the theme Corsair, I went with the Corsair cables. This is a dual 8 pin 6 plus 2 package. Now the only thing I'm concerned with is these are obviously braided, um, nice quality, but they are so thick compared to the original cable. They are much thicker. So in terms of space in this, obviously space is a premium in this case. Hoping that they won't take up too much space and, and they're also a lot longer. These are 650 millimeters. This is what 300, 300 mil. So I'm going to open these. We'll see how long they are and how well we can sort of fit them in here. Right. Okay. So the they're, they're a lot longer. Yeah. You, you actually get two. So that's quite nice. Nice surprise. So you get two, they are pretty much a double the length of the original. And the cables are maybe twice as thick, I would say. The only thing that kind of concerns me is obviously this still runs off one 8-pin like the original, but it terminates. So the the previous cable terminated into one 8-pin. So one 8-pin to one 8-pin. This is a 6 plus 2. Now the, now the new one is one 8-pin still, and now it terminates into two eight pins, two six plus twos. Now, obviously the 2080 Ti Founders Edition, it needs two of these, so that's great, but I'm not sure if I'm concerned just running it off one eight pin port on the power supply, as opposed to running two of these, and then obviously two, two of these into the graphics card. Um, 
I've heard that yes, it does affect um, performance somewhat. I'm not sure how much, but it it is a little bit of concern. I don't know if I want to run you know two of these since I have two, or we'll just run the original plus one of these into that. I think I would I'll just try out I'll try it out this first with just one and then going into the two. Um, at least it's not those dinky. I've seen ones where it just terminates into one six plus two and it has a little a little dinky kind of daisy chain here. At least they kind of start the connection down here and it looks a bit more robust. But uh, I'll try to feed these through now and then kind of tuck it away nicely. And we'll, we'll go with this first and we'll see how well it does if I notice any performance difference or if there's any um, noticeable bottlenecking, etc. But we'll, we'll go with this first, we'll feed it through. Alright guys, a little update. Um, I think I'm pretty much done here on the motherboard side of things except for running new fan cables for the top fan, the Noctua. But yep, yeah, um, the new PCIe 8 pin is underneath this one, run through to the other side. I've got the 870 EVO, so the SSD 2.5 inch, installed in this slot here, hooked up. Um, the new riser cable is in the thermal take one. Um, on this side of things, let me just put this gently. Um, down here, I've installed the original SSD, the 500 gig SSD that was in this system. So it kind of hooks up the solder and powers down there. And there's a nice little uh, drive bay there. So if you just uh, pull on this little tab, it pops out. It's a snug fit, but that's a, a cool little mounting slot that they put there for you. So you can have two 2.5 inch drives. But yeah, I think I'm going to run just the longer fan um, kind of cable extender here. So it can come all the way up the top. So when I do take off the top panel sometimes, I can just unplug from the very top here. I don't have to fiddle around and then unplug from here. So I run this and then I think we can close up sort of the motherboard side of things and we can just focus on the graphics card side of things.
All right, guys, a little bit of a little bit of an update. Now I have the riser cable installed um, from the power cables for the graphics card. Obviously, this one is a lot longer. Um, it was pretty much double the length. So I think what I'm gonna do is I've got a zip tie here. I'm gonna keep that folded like that, tuck it in here, and then have these to terminate into the graphics card, which is gonna be somewhere about there. Okay. Um, now the riser cable, like it's it's great quality. Um, one thing that I thought, which I thought was standard amongst all riser cables, is the two mounting holes. So one there and one on the other side. I thought that was kind of a standard width on all riser cables, but turns out not. On the thermal take, one of the holes lines up, which is where I put a screw in just to hold it in. But on this side, it is off by about almost a whole centimeter. I want to say. Or maybe half a centimeter, but yeah, it, it's off here. Um, so I'm not kind of thrilled about that. I'm not sure how we're gonna deal with this. From what I can see, this mounting screw is the closest in terms of the position of the actual um, slot itself to the original. But yeah, um, I've done my best to fold the new cable it's kind of in line with how the original was. As you can see, it's just, it's crazy. I do like kind of this split design. It gives you a bit more flexibility. But yeah, little M.2 is hiding up behind that. Hopefully it won't get heat soaked. But um, I think what's next is we're going to test fit the graphics card. I mean, I've already fitted it in here. We're going to test it out, see how it goes, especially with this kind of situation here. I mean, it doesn't really matter because the graphics card will be held in with this bracket up top. So we'll do that and then we'll try to get this power cable situation down and then we might need to take it out anyway because when we do the lighting node, I'm going to need to figure out where I want to put these strips. So I think next up is the graphics card. So graphics card is in, 2080 Ti in a Corsair 1 Pro 2017. It fits with room to spare, honestly, there's, I can fit a whole finger kind of in this gap, but it's nice. Um, the new riser cable, yeah, the, the mounting holes don't line up at all, but thankfully with this bracket and this top one, this thing is rock solid. It's not going anywhere, but that is kind of a shame, I guess. Um, now, okay, I do have a mess of power wires that I do not know what to do with. Um, they go in there, There's, there is quite a bit of room for them, so I need to do some magic with tucking this away nicely. And then I'm not sure how much room I've got left for LEDs. Hopefully one along the bottom, maybe one along this edge. And then maybe if I can fit one there. And then I'm not sure where I'm gonna be able to put the little controller, I'm not sure how big it is either, but maybe we'll stick it in the top here somewhere. But um, yeah, it looks looks quite good. We won't spin the fans. Um, but let me see if, what I can do with this situation. And then the last thing to do is change over the top fan with the Noctua and then do the lighting. Okay, we're finally up to the lighting, deciding where this is going to go. Um, 
Should be okay. How do you open this? Okay. Oh, okay, it's really small, the controller. Thank goodness. I can just tuck it somewhere here, maybe even at the top. You get how many? Four strips. Should be nice. And then, what else do we have? Ah, okay. Some extensions. This is the micro B. Um, kind of controller, but we already have one routed and wired for us, but we use this one with the little right angle as well. It's a bit nice. So we don't need that, we'll put that back. And what is this? A three pin to three pin. All right. Let me figure this out and where I want to put all this stuff. And then, yeah, we'll do it. And obviously we have a side of power right here, which is really nice because the side of power on the controller goes right into there that way beautifully and then yeah hopefully we can hide can we tuck this right in here maybe all right Okay guys, time for a little update. Um, I'm almost finished. So graphics card is in, power cables are run, kind of, I tried to do a little cable management here. I'm a little OCD when it comes to cables, but um, yeah, I think it looks neat enough. Looks pretty good. So that's there. I've got LED strips on the left and right to kind of try to light this up when that side panel is on. So hopefully that turns out nicely. Um, I'll try to get a good shot of where I kind of mounted the LEDs. But you can see, it's just there. I've only stuck down this middle portion. And then it goes all the way down. It connects to the other side. And then the other side, I'll try to show you. Just goes around there. So LED strips all around there. Um, kind of the last thing to do is to do the top fan. Oh, also, I wanted to show you, I didn't end up, I really wanted to stuff the lighting node pro into this little pocket here, but um, I don't know, after struggling for a bit, uh, I have decided not to, so I ended up putting the lighting node pro right here. Um, there was a big kind of gap here, so I, I decided to put it there. Um, so the USB cable and the SATA power is back there as well. I kind of did the cables nicely. And everything so this I haven't taped it down or velcroed it down. I kind of just left it free hanging there, but It um it is pretty snug that pushes up right against This part of the rad, but um, it's not too bad. It, it's not super tight, but it holds it in there snugly and The nice thing with that is now having it there if I tilt tip the system back up All of my fan kind of plugs are accessible right at the top here. So this is coming from the LED strip and this is from the motherboard CPU header. So that's where the main Noctua fan is going to, to plug into. And now if you can see down in here, I'll try to get a zoom shot. Um, both of my fan, from, fan headers from the Lighting Node Pro are right down into there. So this obviously is going to take out one. And then if I ever, because I do have two two extra strips which I'm not sure I'm going to put or what I want to do with. I might run the two strips around here because that Noctua fan doesn't have any lighting. So I'm going to plug this one back into here like that. Okay, we'll tie that together. And now I think I'm just going to change that fan over to the Noctua one and then figure out the other lighting options here.
All right, guys, we are done, I think. So I did end up going crazy with the RGB. I mean, if I don't use them, I can just turn them off. But since I had two extra strips left, I wanted to put them somewhere. So I put, an, put one strip along the top and plug that straight into the, um, what should we call it? The Node Pro controller, which is right there. And then the, the second strip I ran again along the graphics card side. So I just ran an extra, a second one along here, which goes a bit further down the bottom. So hopefully we get some light shining from the bottom up on the graphics card. So I think that is it. Let's, let's check off everything that we did. We did the power cables for the GPU. We did the riser cable for the GPU. We did the GPU insulation itself. We did the Node Pro lighting. We did the 870, what do you call it? We did the 870 EVO 2.5 SSD. Then we did the 970 EVO Plus M.2 NVMe for the boot drive. And then we did the Noctua fan, top fan, the only fan in the system. Now the only thing I haven't changed, which you may be asking, why haven't you done that, is the RAM. So from stock, this comes with 16 gigs of RAM. Um, obviously, it's that's an easy swap. It's just take them out and put the new ones in. But um, for now, I thought 16 gigs was kind of a good, all right level. In the future, if I want to go 32, that will be a simple upgrade. And when I get to that point, I might just do a whole motherboard swap and then go to something like an AMD Ryzen or we can go Intel again. But let's get this all closed up. Let me get Windows installed and that new boot drive and then we'll see how it looks. Alright guys, um, hope you enjoyed that little montage, but yeah, as you can see, the PC is done in all its glory. Um, it looks really good. I'm really tempted to kind of leave that side panel off, but I'll, I'll, I've closed it back up. I end up closing it back up, but um, yeah, it looks so good, honestly. Um, it runs perfectly. I've got Windows installed. All the drivers are done. I guess the next step is really to migrate all of my files, my work files, and my and Steam and everything from the from the laptop onto this one but yeah it's been running beautifully for the last couple of days i'm really excited happy um i'm hoping this will last me another probably three to five years before i have the urge to kind of rip everything out and upgrade to the latest and greatest but yeah thanks for watching i know the video was really long it was much longer than i um, anticipated it being um but you know after i got done filming everything i had all this footage i wasn't sure what to do with so i ended up making just this gigantic long step-by-step -step kind of walkthrough video but yeah hope you enjoyed thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one